Hey and welcome to a new installment of the ABC of EV, our look at explaining the terminology around electric vehicles. Now we love our cars here on Best EV and of course they're all powered by batteries. One thing we mention a lot is battery capacity, so today we thought we'd take a few minutes to look at what battery capacity is and what it means. My name is Martin Lee, welcome along to the channel. If you like what we do here, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a show. So what do we mean by battery capacity? Well, it used to be that you'd ask someone what size their engine was in the car, and they'd say oh, a 2 litre petrol, a 1.6 litre diesel. These days, we're much more likely to ask about the battery inside someone's EV rather than the motor size. Of course, you could ask that question. We tend to talk a lot about batteries, though. And when we talk about battery capacity, we generally mean how much energy gets stored inside all those cells which are brought together to make the one battery. Typically, energy storage is measured in amp hours or kilowatt hours. More on that in just a moment. Before we get into the nitty gritty though, let's look at a couple of examples. Well, about 10 years ago, as Nissan and Renault were bringing EVs to the mainstream with the Leaf and the Zoe, the Nissan had a capacity of 24 kilowatt hours, whilst Tesla, the other side of the Atlantic, were launching EVs with much bigger batteries. Typically, you'd get just over 100 kilometers of charge on those early city EVs. Fast forward a few years and Hyundai released the Kona. Again, another mid-sized, mid-priced family car and yet the battery pack is nearly three times that size and capable of over 400 kilometers on a single charge. Things are developing quickly in the EV world. Lucid are about to release the Air that has a battery pack of over 110 kilowatt hours and yet that'll go over 800 kilometers on a single charge. So it's not only about the raw number, how big is your battery, but also how efficient is it and what can it do? So how do we measure capacity? In the EV world, we typically talk about amp hours or actually in nearly all cases, kilowatt hours. Now BMW with their i3 until recently would advertise the car, would talk about the energy stored in amp hours, but they really were an outlier. It wasn't wrong to do that, but everyone else talked kilowatt hours. So we're gonna focus on that measure today. What is a kilowatt hour? It's the amount of energy that you would consume by running a 1000 watt appliance for one hour. It is a measure of that energy over time. So car batteries are rather large. We don't talk about watts, we talk about kilowatts. 1,000 watts is a kilowatt. Now to make it more practical, let's look at how EVs use that capacity. Well, unlike a light bulb, an EV varies its power output over the course of a journey. A light bulb is either on or off. Let's face it, if it's on, it could be using anything, I don't know, say 100 watts. So when it comes to using an EV's battery capacity, we typically say that the car uses a certain amount of energy over a certain distance, because we can't measure it every second. It's always going up and down according to how you're driving. So maybe we would say that a car uses 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Or maybe you'd hear it said as 150 watt hours per kilometer. Or maybe you'd hear five miles per kilowatt hour. There are various ways of talking about it. Of course, it varies as well on the weather and the driving style. If you want some more good info, check out our previous video on efficiency. Now, EV aficionados watching this, maybe for a refresher on the terminology, will be thinking, hang on, he hasn't talked buffers or usable capacity. Don't worry. I haven't forgotten. Let's get on to that. Different manufacturers give their battery capacities in different ways. For example, Tesla don't advertise the size of their battery in kilowatt hours. Uh, often it's long range or performance. They give it those kind of words, but it's not hard to figure out how much energy is in the battery. They're just not open to sharing that how they used to be. The early Teslas would literally put it right on the back of the cars. A P80, an 85, a P100D, like that was the size of the battery pack. Others will tell you the overall battery capacity, but they won't reveal the portion that you're allowed to use. This is because every EV, to varying degrees, has what we call a buffer at the top and bottom of the battery. When I say top and bottom, I mean a full state of charge and an empty state of charge or discharge. So for example, the Nissan Leaf had an advertised battery capacity 
of 30 kilowatt hours. I suppose it did, but it didn't really because only 26.5 kilowatt hours of that was available for you to use traveling places. The rest kept in reserve to protect the battery and increase longevity. And let me explain, it's not like there's a physical portion of the battery that's ring fenced that you can't use, almost reserved if you like. What we're actually talking about is the voltage of each individual cell. They don't allow you to go to the very extremes of the cell being completely fully charged or completely empty. But as this is a video to introduce you to EV Tech and not an engineering video, you can always research that more if you're interested in exactly what that means. On the other hand, the very capable Hyundai Kona declares a usable battery of 64 kilowatt hours. The battery is in fact much bigger than 64, but Hyundai just tell us what we can actually use to move the car around and make some sensible comparisons when we're shopping for cars. Something worth bearing in mind if you are looking to buy an EV and a good question to ask. Other ways to think about capacity. So there are some of the main ways to talk about battery capacity, but before we wrap up, let's take a look at a few other connected matters. Nothing is ever that simple, right? In terms of battery capacity, we've only talked about individual batteries in individual EVs, but what about production capacity? We see that talked about in the news, currently a huge talking point. We won't go into a lot of detail today, but as you can imagine, batteries are big business now, and you have to source the raw materials, process them into a finished product, into cells, often modules, which are slightly larger, and then you make them into a big battery. It's often the case of how it's been done up to now. The race for EVs is really heating up, and battery manufacturing is scrambling to keep up. Elon Musk would love to be sending out next generation roadsters and cyber trucks and semis but there just aren't the batteries around. Another interesting way to talk about battery capacity is to reflect on whether or not we're using them in the right way. For example, you could put one battery of 100 kilowatt hours in a Model S, or you could put 200 e-scooters on the road. They could have a battery capacity of half a kilowatt hour, 500 watts, and do 25 kilometers of range. Also in terms of battery capacity, are we getting the most efficient use from the battery in any given car? A 50 kilowatt hour battery in a small hatchback takes you a lot further than that battery in a two and a half ton SUV. And if both the small car and the large SUV are both used to move one person around a city, is that the best use for battery capacity? It's lots to think about in this world of EVs, and if you're new to it, we'd love to continue the conversation with you. That's it from us today. Hopefully we've given you an explanation and context into battery capacity without going too deep, but we'd like to hear from you. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Maybe you'd like another video on battery chemistry and something about how that changes over time. What do you think about battery capacity? Are we chasing bigger batteries without thinking about how we use them? Well, let's continue the conversation below. Leave us a comment and we will reply. We love to have a chat with you. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up icon. It tells us you enjoyed it and we'll make more just like it. And we'll see you on the next one.